Serving Southwest Saskatchewan, this is CGFB TV. In this edition, grain transportation sparks concrete changes. Tips for top crop management. Agriculture comes to the classroom and working with the wind. Hello and welcome to Agribiz. We begin with the wind. Well, the wind is one thing you can count on across the prairies. For hundreds of years, people have been trying to harness the wind, but stopping the wind is also a major concern. Now, how can it be done? Well, the answer may be more obvious than you think. For well over 100 years, producers in Saskatchewan have used the practice of shelter belts to help stop soil erosion and to improve the irrigation for their crops. Essentially just rows of trees, the shelter belts are usually planted in a north to south direction to slow down the wind that blows. Well, going back into history, we've always had wind in Saskatchewan. Um, it's, been, it's been quite a big problem. Going back to the 30s, known as the dirty 30s, there was a lot of wind in there, a lot of wind causing a lot of drought conditions and a lot of dust blowing in the air. Um, with the adaption of trees into the prairies, it slowed down the wind and it's, it slowed down the dust in the air as well. Shelter belts have been around for a long time. Um, if you go way back into the 1800s when the first settlers were in the area trying to farm, um, they realized that the prairie winds were here and it, was, it blew the soil around and it dried out the ground. The first settlers tried to put in species from Eastern Canada or the United States and those species didn't work well in, in Western Canada. In 1901, uh, the federal government set up a tree nursery at Indian Head, Saskatchewan. And in their first year of production, they supplied 6,000 seedlings to prairie farmers. And by 1906, they were up to 2 million seedlings distributed annually. So it, w it started very early, and, and pe farmers knew at a very early time that trees were important as far as slowing the wind erosion process down in Saskatchewan. The most effective species of trees are carragana and green ash because of their dense foliage and short root growth. A good shelter belt is a tree row that is very consistent in height. Uh, as, as well, it's quite dense. It's going to slow down the speed of the wind. Also in the winter time, it's going to allow snow to be trapped in the field. And it's going to, it's going to, there isn't going to be any gaps in it. If you have gaps in your shelter belt, you're going to have pockets where you're going to have decreased plant growth. So a good, thick, dense shelter belt is the best. The Prairie Farm Rehabilitation Administration, or PFRA, provides the trees at a minimal fee to any bona fide farmer and will educate the farmer on how to set up a shelter belt. After that, it's the farmer's responsibility to plant and look after the trees. Weeds can be controlled at basically at two different stages. Before you plant your trees, you should go in there the year before and summer follow the site. You can put down a trifluralin based product for weed control for, the, for, the, for that year and the year after. Sprays are a concern, especially in the harvest time of the year when fellows are out there desiccating their crops. If you're using an unregistered variety for the tree species and you get drift onto the trees, you could damage the trees or even kill the trees. So if a farmer has gone to all the time and expense of money of getting a shelter belt row established, one little mistake can wipe out a lot of work. Shelter belts take on average five to 10 years to become functional and last from 30 to 60 years. As you can hear, Larry Hill is familiar with shelter belts and the wind. Well, when we moved here, the this farm was uh, what you'd call marginal in terms of its soil and, and production. And we thought that the trees would help control wind erosion. And they have, in fact, done that. We've had virtually no wind erosion on this land since the trees got up to about uh, the 8 to 10 foot height level. It pretty well has stopped all, all wind erosion since then. We have, uh, uh, I think, a substantially higher yield in the areas where we have the trees than if they were not there. And we've done things like plant alfalfa and other grasses inside shelter belt rows. And uh, I think last year was a good example where some alfalfa winter killed where they're outside the trees. And inside the tree rows, the alfalfa just did very well. And it, it just kept enough snow on the trees. What we saw in that area was snow cover on the, on the uh, ground 
for the whole winter practically because the trees kept the snow from blowing away and, uh, and also had more snow stop because of the, uh, the uh, wind sheltering effect. The average shelter belt will deflect wind upwards of 20 times the height of the trees being used. But the protection that the shelter belt offers does come at a price. They take approximately two acres per mile of trees. And uh, that land's definitely not in, in production of the crop that you're trying to grow and sell. But I, I think the net effect is a gain in terms of production. There's less runoff from the, from the treed areas. We notice that because the, the soil tends to be less uh, frozen in the spring and water starts to uh, percolate into the soil sooner in the year. The biggest problem with shelter belts is you should have planted them 10 years ago because they take time to grow. But uh, I would certainly recommend anyone that, uh, that is interested in the long-term protection of the land to, to plant trees. There's much more ahead on agribusiness. Your ESSO agent is an agent that cares about you and the farming community. He offers ESSO bulk fuel deliveries, fertilizers that meet your requirements, herbicides for all your needs, and you can get off to a smooth start with quality ESSO oils and lubricants. You can also contact your agent for expert, professional advice on all the products we sell. See Ken Shaw in Shaunavon in East End. Murray Giesbrick serves you in Morris, Hodgeville and Gravelberg. And see Dan Stevenson in Gull Lake and Cabri. Your water, cool, clear water, renewing, rejuvenating. But left alone or improperly treated, this water will leave a scummy feeling when you wash your hair, make your dishes difficult to clean, and leave an unpleasant aftertaste in your mouth. Change that. Clear, refreshing water is just a phone call away. 773-8888. A&R WaterWise. They're in the yellow pages under Water Treatment Equipment, Service and Supplies. Treat your water properly and it will treat you well. Call A&R WaterWise. Frank's Saddlery and Supply have been proudly serving Swift Current and District for over 20 years. See us from men's and ladies' winter coats, scotch caps, leaning tree Christmas cards, boot rubbers, and overshoes. Also see us for boots by Hondo, Brahma, and Laredo, jeans by Wrangler, Rocky Mountain, and Dave, and straw and felt hats by Resistol, Bailey, and American. We're also your headquarters for saddles, tack, and grooming supplies. And Frank and his staff would like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. Frank Saddlery and Supply, in the Hillside Plaza, where the coffee pot is always on. SGI Canada's AgroPack is the answer to your insurance needs. With an AgroPack, you can purchase a variety of coverages to protect your farming and ranching operations. By working with you, your SGI Canada broker can customize a single package tailored to meet your individual needs. One convenient policy to ensure your dwellings, belongings, buildings, livestock, machinery, liability, and more. See W.W. Smith Insurance in Swift Current, East End Agencies in East End, Gull Agencies in Gull Lake, and Herbert Morse Agencies in Herbert and Morse. Is there a very important person you might have forgotten this year? The horizon is changing across the prairies. Scaffolding and construction cranes are leading the shift in new grain processing technology. So we can load cars within uh, three and a half minutes. Canada's grain handling system is changing to keep pace with world market demands. Grain transportation is becoming more customer driven. Customers want a product of consistent quality, on time and ready to use. At the same time, railways are consolidating lines to save money. To keep pace with the changes, elevator companies are replacing the old wooden landmark of the prairie with new concrete superstructures. Providing the same services as its predecessor, collecting grain for shipment to markets is only one function of the new well, elevators. Yeah, the freight advantage, they're going to save money on freight. Uh, he's going to be able to move his grain more quickly and uh, he will be uh, paid for his dockage. And uh, probably another issue is uh, the condominium storage that we're gonna be put up. He will be able to put it here and uh, move his grain from the main line. The drive to reduce and shipping unnecessary grain byproducts has created new opportunities for the elevator companies. Work that used to be done at the ports is now done locally. Probably the biggest one uh, would be the uh, uh, export cleaning we're doing here. Uh, it's done right here. The farmer is paid for his dockage at uh, a level here. Rather than shipping it to the coast where he's, he doesn't receive anything. 
It works out to be a good deal for producers and creates a new product. The dockage here is, is sold to a local feed mill and uh, it's processed into cattle and chicken feed. The new terminals are built to handle big grain volumes. This facility here will probably be handling probably anywhere from 100 to 200,000 ton a year, which a normal facility probably would do 20,000 ton. The other difference is the number of grain cars being loaded for shipment. The CP allows us an incentive to load cars, so we're looking at 50, uh, 25 to 50 to 100 car spots. And uh, we like to load uh, a certain grain on them 25 or 50 cars. That's the difference of the terminals. And the rail cars are loaded to meet specific customer orders. The terminal difference too is we may be only buying spring wheat this week and, and Durham the next week in order to fill these cars, uh, you know, quickly and more efficiently. As market demands change, so are the options producers have to get their grain sold. Instead of taking a load to the elevators, producers can buy storage space. Condominium storage is where the producer is able to buy a space uh, within our facility and bring it in and move it as quotas or contracts allow at his convenience and uh, not at uh, wheat board calls. Buying or leasing storage gives the flexibility to sell when market conditions are right without losing transportation time. He's building storage here instead of uh, buying a bin on the farm and he can be somewhere at any different date and, and be able to sell his wheat and, and on a nice day refill his condo. The big terminal may cause some to think its only focus is big, but it serves all. We've been asked a lot of times, do we handle one-ton trucks? Well, of course we will. We'll handle uh, anything that comes in. Uh, the difference between this and the older elevators is we can handle grain here at 30,000 bushels an hour as compared to 6,000. The product in the terminal bins and ready for shipping opens up new doors. We go to sell malt barley. Uh, Canada feed, non-boards of course. Uh, we work with the wheat board on on uh, putting together these unit trains to the US or Vancouver and we have to work very closely with the board and and uh, I guess the wheat board right now is the main marketing channel to us but we we are looking at the mills down east, we're looking at the mills in the US and these are what we call our niche markets, which allow us to get a premium for our products, which in, which in a sense are passed back to the producer. Once a decision to sell is made, the grain is tested for moisture, protein, and dockage before it is loaded. This is another new step. Testing ensures the shipment meets quality standards, and it's the increasing emphasis on quality and efficiencies in grain handling that are changing the prairie skyline. Stay with us, we have much more to come. Excuse me, I'm finding out what people know about Saskatchewan credit unions. Did you know that in 130 communities, a credit union is the only financial institution? No. Did you know that credit unions offer a full range of financial services? Yeah. Oh, did you know that credit unions give you an unlimited guarantee on deposits? Wow. Credit Unions of Saskatchewan. Good for you, good for your community. You dropped this. New Holland 70 Series. Genesis. Designed for comfort. Dedicated to productivity. With a luxurious cab interior. The Sidewinder movable console. Single lever power shift. Total tractor control at your fingertips. One demonstration will make you a believer. Genesis, you gotta drive it. See the Ford New Holland dealer in your area. How would you like to win a brand new home? You can, simply by purchasing a ticket on the Fairview Rink Expansion Committee's home lottery, you can win a brand new 1,665 square foot home. Estimated value of $170,000. Tickets are just $100 each and only $3,000 will be sold. This is your chance of a lifetime. Tickets are available at Frontier Agencies, Work World, the Wheatland Mall, or any committee member. Over 60 contractors have volunteered time to construct this home, and most materials have been donated by local businesses. Please support the Fairview Rink Expansion Committee's home lottery. 
SGI Canada's AgroPack is the answer to your insurance needs. With an AgroPack, you can purchase a variety of coverages to protect your farming and ranching operations. By working with you, your SGI Canada broker can customize a single package tailored to meet your individual needs. One convenient policy to ensure your dwelling, belonging, building, livestock, machinery, liability, and more. See W.W. Smith Insurance in Swift Current, East End Agencies in East End, Gull Agencies in Gull Lake, and Herbert Morse Agencies in Herbert and Morse. Don't miss the exciting action with the men and women of the Cape. Roger that. Throttle up. Agriculture in the classroom, yes. All across the prairies, teachers are beginning to incorporate agricultural themes into the regular curriculum. One school in central Saskatchewan takes the students past the farm and into the wider world of agriculture. There's an old saying, give someone a fish and you'll feed them for a day. Teach them to fish and you'll feed them for a lifetime. This idea is being put to the test by a group of grade 11 students in Asquith, central Saskatchewan. The class is getting a chance to learn about agriculture firsthand through a unique program being offered by their science teacher, who believes that teaching kids how to think for themselves and find information is just as important as teaching kids what to think. I've been doing this particular project for uh, about four or five years now. I feel that it's um, a really good way of starting a, a biology year off. It gets the kids involved in a science and a very important um, local issue as well. I mean, our province runs on agriculture and it's kind of nice to have the kids involved with it as soon as they can. I can never get them to work as hard if I were to make them write from the board or open a text up. The kids, when you give them a real project where they have to do real homework, not schoolwork at home, when they have to do the real homework, they just give some glorious product. Uh, going and visiting all kinds of farms to bring in the, all the different varieties which we have on the outdoor walls plus all the research that they've done and all the contacting of the ag reps has been, every year it's more than I imagine the kids are gonna do. While most of the class lives in the town of Asquith, others come from the surrounding farms and have had agriculture as part of their whole lives. The 25 students were divided into teams of two or three and worked independently and without teacher aid over the period of a month. The groups then present their results to the entire class so that everyone could learn from the experience. It was pretty interesting because most of the stuff I never knew about. Um, all the different types of crops, so many different types of crops. When we got information from different types of farmers and agriculturalists, they um, described to us how much money they brought in and I never realized how much money they brought in. All peas were probably the f one of the first cultivated by man. And um, now, the pea exceeds about 9 million hectares and is grown to exceed production over about 10 million tons. The students select their own agricultural topic to learn about. They investigate the crop, do all the research, and grow a sample of that crop. And while the exercise is a learning experience, some students have a bit of a head start. I did a project on canary seed and I learned a lot about it. Um, my grandfather farms it in, about by Asquith and he helped me quite a bit with it and I talked to some ag reps and some people in the university that are doing um, experiments with it and learned a whole bunch of information from there. I also, my aunt works in genetics, agriculture genetics in the city and she helped me find some information as well. Canary seed, when you harvest it, there are little like hairs on the bottom of the, of the top part of the plant and it's very itchy and it gets in the farmer's skin and it makes them very itchy for the next two or three days as they're doing experiments to find a variation that doesn't grow those little hairs so that it won't be itchy for the farmers anymore. But learning about the crop is only part of the program. Finding out what practical use the crop is put to is just as important. Barley is usually planted around May and um, the Harrington Tour barley is the type that he grew and it takes about 31 days to ripen and then they uh, either combine it or they swath it to let it dry and then they combine it after. 60 to 75 percent of barley is actually used for um, feed for a stock, but the rest of it, it can be malted and used in a variety of different things. Malt is used in um, mostly beer products. It's also used in baby food and some chocolate bars. And um, it can be pearled to use for um, soups and um, crackers and different cereals and porridge and stuff like that. 
The students display their work both in the classroom and for the rest of the school to see. But besides the actual work, the students get much more out of the learning experience. These guys are learning to access information from all kinds of different sources. And uh, considering they've only got a year left of being in school, that is every bit as important as anything factual I could, uh, you know, dish out to them and have them spew back to me. The, uh, yeah, the idea of them being able to get their own information, I think, is mostly what my job is about. Well, often we hear of new ideas, but may be reluctant to try them because of the unknown. Well, crop rotation is not new, but some recent work makes it worth another look. And the results could improve producers' profitability. Producers are continually deciding the best way to manage one of their largest assets, their land. Growers take into account the soil type of their land, moisture content, input costs, market potential, and risk factors that changing crops can bring. Traditionally, the accepted method of balancing these is a wheat fallow rotation. It may be conservative, but it works. Farmers have traditionally used a fallow wheat system as a means of overcoming some of the risk associated with our climate, our soils and our climate. Uh, the fallow wheat system gives them a, 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 some level of assurance of getting at least an acceptable yield almost one year after another. But land use studies over the past 30 years showed land management choices affect an operation's livelihood. Under our fallow wheat systems, we're finding that it's most destructive to the soil. It exposes the soil to a lot of potential loss from wind and water erosion because of the fact that we, we tend to rely a lot on mechanical tillage as our main means of weed control. It also results in, in declining soil fertility in the long term because by disturbing the soil through tillage, we're actually encouraging the rate of oxidization or breakdown of that organic matter, and we end up over a long term essentially mining our soil. If moisture and inputs change, so will soil productivity, and that's important in today's market of higher wheat prices compared to the past. And protein content is now a price factor. Now, the things that affect your protein are primarily weather. Water and temperature are the main factors. Uh, if you have high moisture, or high precipitation, then you get high yields and you get low protein. In dry years, you have the opposite. You get small grains, you got low yields, you got high protein. In hot years, it's the same. You get very high protein, and it doesn't really matter how much nitrogen you put on, you have high protein. The conclusion may be, apply more fertilizer to improve protein and yields. But what's the right amount? In our area, you're best to just fertilize for yield the protein will take care of itself. You get much more money, extra money, for the yield increase that you're getting from the nitrogen than you get in terms of the protein premium. So just go ahead and do your soil tests and get the nitrogen recommendation based on yield and apply that amount and that's when you stand to make the most money. With an input strategy in place, what are the considerations for managing the land? Given today's cost for inputs, if wheat prices are less than $3.50 a bushel, you're better off staying with a fallow wheat system. If wheat prices are between $3.50 and roughly $4.50 per bushel, then we see a fallow wheat and a fallow wheat wheat system being about equal in, in terms of profits or net return to producers. And if prices are between roughly $4.50 and $6 a bushel, that's when the fallow wheat wheat system shines. It, it's, it's, it's definitely superior to fallow wheat. Um, and if wheat prices are even higher, $6 or more, we can actually justify on average going to a continuous wheat system, which is a very radical change from a fallow wheat system. We're going from cropping half of our land base to cropping it every year. Like any business, there are risks. Risk of crop failure, grain prices, and the weather. Diversifying can make a difference. Besides wheat, we can start substituting in crops like lentils. Lentils uh, is a crop, again, that's uh, quite well suited to our environment here. It grows well on fallow and also on stubble conditions, which is where we're growing it. Uh, our long-term lentil yield in the last five or six years now has been in excess of 1,200 pounds per acre. 
Good yields and strong prices are another reason to consider crop rotations. The one objection may be increased risk, but risk is an element of running a business and it can be minimized through crop insurance. If putting all your eggs in one basket sounds too risky, crop rotation can put diversity into your operation. So by diversifying your rotation, um, uh, in most cases extending the rotation as well, you can, I think under the present conditions, improve your profitability quite substantially, although you may have to accept slightly more risk. Agribiz will be right back. All new 1997s are arriving at Cypress Motors. Come in and let us introduce you to the 1997 Expedition. It's a new rugged, go anywhere, do anything, full-size four-door four-wheeler. And check out the all new 1997 Escort. It's been redesigned and re-engineered to give you even more for your money. And for worker play, it's the Ford F-150. It's larger, power and more safety and convenient features than ever before. Check out the all new 1997 at Cypress Motors in Swift Current and Maple Creek. Your ESSO agent is an agent that cares about you and the farming community. He offers ESSO bulk fuel deliveries, fertilizers that meet your requirements, herbicides for all your needs, and you can get off to a smooth start with quality ESSO oils and lubricants. You can also contact your agent for expert, professional advice on all the products we sell. See Ken Shaw in Shaunavon in East End. Murray Giesbrick serves you in Morris, Hodgeville and Gravelberg. And see Dan Stevenson in Gull Lake and Cabri. Are you sitting down? Because Canada's favorite comedy troupe is back. You betcha. Tell me about it. Wimp, wimp, wimp. Believe me, it is fun for the whole family. If it wasn't for bingo and lottery winning, we couldn't afford to stay on welfare. We'll have a blast. Fire. Jazz. <laughs> I told you you should be sitting down. Royal Canadian Air Force, Friday at 7.30 on CBC. next edition of Agribiz. At this point, we're selling to every continent except for Antarctica. The uh, United States is our largest market, and Japan is our second largest market. A spectacular sunset is one of the many unexpected pleasures of staying overnight on a vacation farm. The primary processing area of the pilot plant, uh, that's where the crushing of the oil seed is done to extract the crude oil from the seed. That's on the next edition of Agribiz.